I am uh, Professor Thierry Facon from Lille University Hospital in France and a member of the, the French Maloma Group. Uh, at EHA uh, this year, I, I was presenting uh, this uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, Maloma study uh, referred as the Maya study. Uh, as you know, the, the Maya study uh, was a study conducted in the elderly patient with newly diagnosed Maloma and the study had, had a control arm uh, with lenalidomide and, and low-dose dexamethasone and investigated the combination regimen with daretumumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. So these are my disclosures. So the, uh, we already uh, have uh, uh, daretumumab-based studies for uh, myeloma patients. So the, the phase three uh, Alcione, Maya, and Cassiopeia studies uh, established uh, the PFS benefit of daratumumab in combination with standard of care versus standard of care alone for patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. Uh, we, we already know that uh, in the context of the Alcyon study, uh, an OS benefit was also observed for those patients who, who received uh, the daratumumab-based regimen, which was daratumumab in combination with bortezomib, melphalan, and prednisone. On the other hand, we have uh, uh, VRD studies, uh, especially the so-called SFOC777 study uh, in patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma without intent for immediate stem cell transplantation. And this uh, SFOC777 study established VRD as a start of care regimen for elderly patients. So this is the combination of bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. Uh, at the medium follow-up of uh, uh, 84 months, the median PFS was uh, 41 months for VRD versus 29 months for lenalidomide and dexamethasone. And median OS was not reached versus 69 months for uh, lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Importantly, the, the study population of the SOC777 study is very different as compared to the study population we have in the Maya study. 43% uh, of patients in the SOC777 study were uh, 65 years of age or uh, older uh, versus 99% in the Maya study. Uh, however, if you look at patients over the age of 65 years in the SWOG777 study, uh, a significant OS benefit was not observed for VRD versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, median survival was uh, 65 months versus 56 uh, with a p-value of 0.1. Uh, also, uh, importantly, uh, real-world data indicate that at least 50% of non-transplant elderly patients with newly diagnosed myeloma do not receive any subsequent therapy, and suggesting that the most effective regimen has to be used upfront and not saved for relapse, at which time additional uh, genetic abnormalities conferring resistance may have been acquired. The last update of the Maya study was from ASH 2020, presented by Dr. Kuma. At that time, we say that uh, daratumumab in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone prolonged PFS on PFS2 versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone alone. At that time, OS data were not yet mature. So here we report uh, updated efficacy and safety results from a pre-specified interim OS analysis of Maya after a median follow-up of approximately 56 months. So this is the study design. As we said before, this is a study uh, conducted in uh, transplant ineligible patients. And uh, patients were enrolled between March 2015 and January 2017. Uh, this is the, the traditional lenalidomide and low-dose DEX uh, regimen as approved in many countries. And this is DRD with the usual schedule for uh, daratumumab. At the, of course, at the, at the start of the study, uh, daratumumab was delivered uh, IV. But as of today, we have Maya patients who, who, who receive uh, subcutaneous daratumumab. The, the primary endpoint was progression for survival uh, with all other uh, secondary endpoints. So uh, an overall survival was, of course, a key secondary endpoint. So these are demographics and, and, and baseline characteristics. So the, this study population was uh, uh, quite typical for myeloma, except that 
uh, uh, approximately 44% of patients at an age over 75 years. So this is a, uh, this is a large subgroup of uh, uh, 321 patients uh, with an age between 75 and 90 years. And this is, this is more than expected. So usually in uh, uh, myeloma registration studies in the elderly, the proportion of patients over the age of 75 years is approximately 30 to 35% of patients. Otherwise, nothing uh, atypical, uh, about 15% of patients had iris cytogenetics. And, um, and this is the, the usual uh, uh, pattern for uh, isotype and, and ISS. Uh, what about treatment exposure and, and patient disposition? So as we said, median duration of follow-up is about uh, 56 months. Uh, median duration of study treatment was uh, 47.5 months in DRD versus 22.6 months in, in lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Regarding lenalidomide median relative dose intensity, it was less in the DRD arm, 66% versus the RD arm, uh, 86%. 9% uh, of patients in the DRD arm and 4% of patients in the RD arm discontinued lenalidomide only while continuing other uh, study treatment. Uh, relative dose intensity for DRD arm was I at 98%, and uh, only five patients, so which 1% of patients discontinued daratumumab only while continuing on other uh, study treatment. Uh, at the uh, the last uh, data cut, 42% uh, of patients in the DRD arm and 18% of patients in the RD arm uh, remain on study treatment. And the main reasons for uh, treatment discontinuation was uh, a progressive disease uh, on adverse events, uh, which were observed more, more frequently in the lenalidomide and dexamethasone alone arm. Uh, this is the update uh, response rate. Uh, uh, on the left hand side, you have the primary analysis as published uh, some time ago in the New England Journal in 2019. And this is the update uh, response. Uh, in the DRD arm, 93% uh, of patients achieved at least a partial response, 51% of patients achieved a complete response or stringent complete response, and 81% of patients achieved at least a very good partial response. So this regimen is highly effective in terms of uh, uh, response uh, achievement, uh, including for uh, high quality responses. So this is the update PFS. Uh, the DRD continued to, to demonstrate a significant PFS benefit with median PFS not reached uh, with DRD uh, versus 34.4 months for lenalidomide on, on low dose dexamethasone. So this, the hazard ratio is 0.53. The 60 months uh, PFS rate is 52.5% uh, for DRD versus 28.7% for lenalidomide on dexamethasone. So here the median is still not reached, but the median will be approximately uh, five years, uh, probably between 60 and, and let's say uh, 62 months. So this is a, a great uh, uh, achievement for uh, elderly patients with newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. And uh, I do believe that these data provide a new PFS benchmark uh, in patients with a newly diagnosed myeloma who are transplant ineligible. This PFS benefit translated into um, a survival benefit. So median survival was not reached in either arm, but the five-year uh, OS rate was 66.3% for DRD versus 53.1% for lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So the hazard ratio was 0 0.68. So it's, it's very difficult to speculate on uh, uh, what uh, will be at the end uh, the, the median survival uh, in the DRD arm, uh, because uh, as we said previously, uh, uh, a large proportion of patients have, have an age between 75 and 90 years and, and many events uh, even not related to myeloma may occur. But um, I, I do believe that median OS uh, should likely be between 6.5 years and, and seven years, uh, which will be, if this is the case, this will be also a good news for patients. This is the subgroup analysis of uh, overall survival. So the survival benefit uh, 
for DRD was uh, observed in the vast majority of subgroups, uh, uh, except for this uh, quite uh, limited and, and I would say tricky uh, subgroup of patients having some kind of impaired uh, baseline hepatic function. Uh, otherwise, if you look at patients uh, with iris cytogenetics, it's fair to say that the benefit was uh, less pronounced as compared to uh, that achieved in, in patients with standard risk uh, cytogenetics. So the hazard ratio for standard risk patients was 0.64 versus 0.8 for the iris patients. But still, we, we, we got a, a survival benefit for the iris patients as well. Uh, what about subsequent therapy? Uh, median time to next treatment was not reached in the DRD arm versus uh, approximately 42 months uh, with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Uh, 114 uh, patients in the DRD arm and 186 patients in the ARD arm received subsequent therapy. Uh, the majority of patients receive a PI containing regimen uh, without a NIMID. And uh, this was the case for 53% and 54% of patients in DRD and, and RD respectively. Uh, regarding uh, daratumumab, 15% of patients in the DRD arm and 46% of patients in the RD arm received daratumumab as any subsequent therapy. This slide uh, shows uh, uh, most common grade three, four uh, treatment emergent adverse events. Uh, so uh, the the good news is that no uh, new safety concerns uh, were identified with longer follow-up. Uh, of note also, um, uh, we, we, we did see a lower uh, percentage of grade three, four and serious treatment emergent adverse events after two years versus during the first two years of treatment in both arms. So we, we did see uh, more neutropenia, more grade three, four neutropenia, especially more grade three neutropenia, in fact, in the DRD arm. So 37% of patients in the early arm versus 54% of patients in the DRD arm. And uh, as we, we, we said previously in, uh, in other uh, Maya presentations, in fact, we also uh, observed uh, more grade three, four infections. Uh, with uh, some uh, small increase in uh, grade three, four pneumonia, for example. So these are the conclusions for today. After almost five years of follow-up, a significant OS benefit with DRD versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone given to progression was demonstrated in patients with transplant ineligible newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, uh, representing a 32% reduction in the risk of death. The estimated five-year OS rate was 66.3% uh, uh, with DRD versus 53.1% with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, which will uh, likely lead to a substantial improvement of median OS in this patient population. The significant PFS benefit of DRD versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone was maintained with a 47% reduction in the risk of disease progression or deaths. Median PFS for DRD was still not reached. Uh, the estimated five-year PFS rate was 52.5% with DRD and 28.7% with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. These data provide a new benchmark, uh, uh, PFS benchmark in patients with newly diagnosed myeloma who are transplant ineligible. Uh, of note, these PFS and OS uh, results have been achieved in a study population with 44% of patients aged 75 to 90 years. Finally, no new safety concerns were identified with continuous therapy and longer follow-up. And finally, uh, these results uh, very strongly support upfront DRD as a new standard of care for patients with uh, transplant ineligible multiple myeloma. So this, the, this is just to acknowledge uh, uh, many people and many patients. So of course, patients who, who participated in the study, all investigators, who contributed to the study, uh, especially the Intergroup Francophone du Myelome. So for, uh, EF, IFM enrolled uh, about 40% of patients uh, in, the, in the Maya study, uh, staff members at study sites, uh, DSMB members, uh, staff members involved in, in data collection and, and analysis. And finally, uh, it's also important to say that we have two uh, large phase three international 
ongoing frontline registration daratumab studies in the transplant ineligible patients. Uh, so one in transplant ineligible patients, so the, the so-called CFEU study uh, investigating daratumab in combination with, uh, with VRD, and one study in transplant eligible patients called uh, the PERSEU study, also investigating uh, daratumab VRD in the transplant setting. Thank you very much for your attention.